I remember being in middle school and people using Axe after gym class like it was a shower replacement in a can, which it wasn't. It was everywhere. Got a waft of nostalgia. It's for teenage boys and adults shouldn't be using it. Kids of that age, not very, men especially, not very good at washing. So of course, putting something on was probably a good idea considering how, how little time they spend in the shower. The Axe Effect. Axe arrived in the U.S. in 2002, and within a decade, its parent company, Unilever, had sold about $500 million worth of Axe products, mostly by winning over the American teenage boy. When I hear the brand name Axe, my initial thoughts are probably one of the five most successful case studies of really disciplined consumer science and high-level marketing strategy over the last couple of generations. But while Axe continues to be a global phenomena, sales have fallen sharply in the U.S. Now, the brand is refocusing its messaging and strategy. Axe was first launched in 1983 in France under the name Lynx, something that it's still called in some countries due to trademark-related reasons. But the fragrance initially struggled to take off. In 1992, Ann Gottlieb stepped in as a fragrance consultant for Axe. They were really um, misguided about what the fragrances should smell like because they thought of the brand as a deodorant. And I, I treated it like a fine fragrance. And instead of having personal care perfumers um, work on the fragrances, I brought in the same perfumers that I used on Calvin Klein. And while Axe is often associated with provocative and humorous advertising in the early 2000s, the brand took itself far more seriously during its first 10 years. Lynx, because first impressions last. It, it just looked like advertising created by sort of 45 year olds who thought they understood 15 year olds and they didn't. In 1994, Hegarty's advertising firm began working with Axe to help give the brand a reboot. They worked together until 2017. The very, very first spot we did for that commercial, we did that for that was called House Party. The reality of this is that the idea that you spray this on and you get the girl is sort of a nonsense, really. I mean, they know it, we know it. Like all those things, they said, why don't we just kind of play to that? Axe entered the U.S. market in 2002 and sold an estimated $20 million worth of product that year. By 2007, that number crossed $300 million. A brand that could recognize its own irony resonated with teenagers who were looking for a bit of swagger. If you're trying to sell something to people who are a little bit unsure, in themselves lacking confidence, so humor is a great way of overcoming all of that. And there were no influencers then other than customers on their own. And the word of mouth for this brand was unbelievable. Even if it wasn't always for the right reasons, the fragrance took off. Axe's rapid success in the U.S. quickly led to the expansion of its product offerings. They launched all different other products that took the advertising dollars away from the body spray itself. The many and rapid attempts at expanding product offerings came with challenges. Between 2012 and 2017, U.S. retail sales fell over $100 million. New consumer demographic in terms of women's fragrance, uh, a new direction in terms of a category, uh, in terms of face care, and a new marketing strategy, social media platform in terms of storytelling and working with a graphic novel for the first time. It was a lot to achieve all at once. The company's advertising tone also saw a major shift in 2016 with its Find Your Magic campaign. A great opportunity for the team to begin to really nuance and pivot the message of the branding from so much focused around kind of animal attraction, boy meets girl, maybe more what we would call today toxic masculinity to a more nuanced approach that was a bit more inclusive. But it didn't boost sales to the numbers that the brand saw during its heyday a few years prior. In 2022, Axe's total US sales fell to an estimated 300 million. Axe became a bit self-important 
rather than, look guys, this is what this is about. <laughs> Axe's latest line is called the Fine Fragrance Collection, and its marketing takes aim at some higher end brands. With a campaign fronted by rapper Lil Baby. It's the Fine Fragrance, go! I think the team has liked to say over the years, from time to time, that their, con their consumer target was college-aged boys, men, young men. I think that target, in reality, has moved much younger. I think Axe also has a unique opportunity at younger and younger ages and demographics to be an entry point to hygiene that is fragranced. I use it. You do? Yes, yeah. What do you think? It's all right. Yeah. It does the job. Hey, I'll be using that shit, you know, for the girls. Unilever's Axe and Links brand is still embraced worldwide. It saw $1.7 billion in sales for its body sprays and deodorants in 2022, and globally, it sits at number one in the men's deodorant category. The posts of the U.S. market, those college consumers may be using, you know, branded fragrances from fashion houses. But there's a big world out there, and there is an enormous consumer base for the fragrance category in the developing world. There is an enormous consumer base in the middle of the country that's not on the two coasts.